I am Dilip Kumar Das. Welcome to my video today on a very impressive, amazing tree called Pink Trumpet Tree. Botanical name is Tebobuya evelindi, belonging to family Pignoniaceae. It was introduced into India during the British colonial period as a part of botanical aesthetics to beautify Indian cities. It is in full bloom now. You can enjoy the enchanting beauty of its bloom in garden city of Bangalore, along roadsides, in gardens, and also in other cities like Delhi and Mumbai. Please keep watching this video till the end to know more about this splendid species. It is a large deciduous tree attaining a height up to 30 meter with 80 centimeter width. Usually, in some cultivars, average height may vary from 3 meter to 9 meter. It is a canopy tree with more branches with a spread about 8 to 10 meter. Due to its eye-catching flowers in blooming season, it is widely planted as an ornamental tree in landscaping gardens along roadsides and other public amenity spaces. It is native to the rainforest of Latin America, including Mexico, Brazil, northern part of Argentina, and Paraguay. It is the national flower of Paraguay. In the Amazon rainforest, the trees of this species are scattered. The present unsustainable harvesting method is not only a major cause of deforestation in this forest but also is becoming a threat for further depletion of this species. As per IUCN list, it has been presently categorized as least concern. As already spoken, this exotic tree was introduced into India during British rule. Let us know how it was introduced into Bengaluru in Karnataka state. In this connection, we have to mention two pioneering botanists, namely John Cameron and Gustav Harman Kumbrigel, who have been credited for introduction of many native and exotic flora, including Tabebuyas in Lalbagh Botanical Garden, Bengaluru. John Cameron who was born and brought up in England, joined as a curator of Lalbagh Botanical Garden in the year 1874 and remained in charge for 33 years. He is regarded as the father of horticulture in Karnataka. His period is regarded as the golden period of plant introduction into Lalbagh Garden. G. H. Kumbrigel, a German botanist, succeeded Cameron in the year 1908 as a curator of Lalbagh Botanical Garden. He also introduced an incredible number of exotic flora including ornamental and flowering trees in Lalbagh Botanical Garden. He was also involved in the choice of avenue trees for Bangalore city. He served Mysore state for 25 years. Later on, in 1980s, S.J. Neginhal, a well-known forest officer, planted numerous native and exotic species, including tabebuyas along roadsides and in open spaces during his tenure as a deputy conservator of forest Bengaluru for the period from 1982 to 1987. A remarkable aspect of this tree is that it blooms profusely during winter when very few other trees have flowers. In Bengaluru climate, usually its leaf fall starts in November when flower buds begin to appear. The trees start to blossom by mid-November and last from December to March. The tree burst into bloom with clusters of soy pink, 
trumpet shaped flowers with yellow cross. In full bloom stage, the tree looks like a pink cloud on leafless bare branches as noticed in this video. In its blooming season, Bengaluru city turns pink. It confuses with cherry blooms in Japan. People take ritual visit to Kabon Park and Lalbagh Garden for sighting its exciting blooms. Its beautiful look rejuvenates our mind and soul. In Delhi, you can spot its blooming specially in Nehru Park and Pragati Moidan during mid-February to late March. In the southern hemisphere, it flowers between July to September. Sometimes, nursery trade people and even botanist confuses Tabebuya avilandi with Tabebuya rosea. Easy way to identify Tabebuya avilandi is it has smaller and variable leaflets that may be densely hairy on the underside at the very least along the main veins. The margin of leaflets are often serrated near the apex but not always. On the other hand, the leaflets of Tabebuya rosea are much larger, not hairy and having plain margin. Now have a glimpse of Tabebuya rosea tree, how it looks like in full bloom stage to know the difference. The pink trumpet tree is not only a decorative plant but also has high pharmaceutical value and other important uses. Its pleasant yellow colored hardwood is very tough, heavy and naturally durable. In Brazil, after stripping off the outer and inner bark, its hardwood is milled into lumber which is mainly used to make flooring and decking. The tree is also used as honey tree. Some hummingbirds also visit the flowers of this tree. Its bark extract also has potential to control dengue fever mosquito. Now regarding its medicinal uses. In Central and South America, the decoction prepared from the inner bark of this tree has been used as a traditional medicine to treat edema, arthritis, bacterial and fungal infection, fever, syphilis, malaria, stomach disorder, bladder disorder, boils, ulcers, inflammation of prostate, etc. The dried inner bark is boiled to make a brown colored tea called lapacho or tahibo used during flu season and also for easing smoker's cough. The bark is also used as poultice to treat various skin inflammatory diseases. Its bark has potential therapeutic uses against infection, cancer, autoimmunity, diarrhea and other gastrointestinal diseases. The tree was acclaimed to be one of the miraculous cures for cancer and tumors. And it attracted considerable attention as a wonder drug in Brazil and Argentina during 1960s. Two main bioactive compounds called Lepachol and Beta Lepachun have been isolated from this tree. Beta Lepachun is considered to be the main anti-tumor compound. However, further scientific evidences are required to include it in any form of mainstream cancer therapy. However, people use its products as last resource. Its botanical drug material 
is sold in market as tablet, dried bark tea and tincture. It is always better to consult naturopathic doctors before using it. Lastly, about its propagation and cultivation. The species can be easily propagated through seeds. It can be also propagated through cuttings and air layerings. During March to May, mature seed pods are harvested from selected trees and seeds are separated from the pods. Seeds are first sown in small size bags containing suitable well-drained potting mixture in the month of June and kept in sunny indoor location. Watering is done to keep it moist. Seeds will germinate within two weeks. Seedlings are maintained in small bags for about four months and thereafter rebagged into bigger sized bags in the month of November. The seedlings grow slowly with multiple branches. So it takes another seven to eight months to attain plantable height of about five to six feet. During monsoon, the saplings are planted at five to six meter apart in 60 centimeter cubic or one meter cubic pits depending on the size of bags used in nursery. Regular watering is essential during first year of planting for proper root development. Once established, only supplementary watering is needed during dry spell. To encourage strong blooms, fertilizer should be applied before the tree blooms. However, after three years, the fertilizer dose is to be reduced, otherwise it will hamper in blooming. To maintain desired shape, pruning is to be done in dormant season. Let us grow and conserve this marvelously useful tree for the benefit of mankind. Thank you.